All right. Um, did everybody get enough drinks? Good. You need that. <laughs> All right. Um, so today, um, show of hands, um, who has had an experience with graphite? Okay. Who has had a painful experience with graphite? Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm not gonna. The talk is not about graphite. Uh, what I'm gonna. Um, really talk about is how can we ease some of that pain uh, with InfluxDB. <clears throat> uh, so graphite is a great tool. I myself have been a user for quite some time. But there are some growing pains, right? As you scale up data in terms of storage, once you go beyond one node, multiple nodes, clusters, rebalancing, it starts surfacing, right? So um, in the community, uh, a lot of folks actually asked us, hey, can you come up with a migration tool? Uh, but give it, uh, give us some control over uh, how we want to migrate that data over into InfluxDB. So right now, I want to show you a GitHub repo to start with. Um, it's under the Influx uh, data org, right? And it's just called whisper-migrator. Um, we just released it a week or so back, and we already saw people testing it with about 10,000 graphite files, submitting issues, and a couple of PRs coming in, right? So it's getting battle hardened as we speak, right? So anyway, <clears throat> let me jump right into a demo. So uh, for folks who are not very familiar with how graphite, you know, graphite is a good storage engine. It does not really have a very good uh, ecosystem of agents to generate data, right? But it ships with something called as carbon cache, it has carbon agents. So I'm just gonna demonstrate that using, I have a local carbon cache process. You can see that I kicked it off. And to inspect the data, um, what it just did is it wrote a file which have a format um, .wsp. So those are the whisper storage format files that Graphite creates for you. And this is just data from today, right? And if I have to check, like what's if to inspect the data inside it, I can issue a command called as whisper fetch dot python, and let's pick a one, right? Let's say CPU usage dot wsp. Okay, so I can see some data here. My laptop was probably sleeping, but I have a set of data points, right? And these map on to the measurement, which in my case is CPU usage, right? But in case of graphite, you don't really have a, a semblance of a measurement, a tag, and a value. It's all string concatenated one after another, right? So you have to figure it out from there. Okay, so um, we have this utility, and I cloned it to my local Go project, and that's the migration project that we just talked about. I'm just going to get rid of this dummy config JSON. Okay, so it consists of a single migration.go file, and we are giving you a template configuration file or a JSON, which will help you in mapping the graphite data to the schema in InfluxDB, right? But let's assume that you don't have this, right? You're starting from scratch. Um, so I can I'll run this tool. Um, it works in two modes. Uh, the first mode is it uses the V2 client API or the HTTP API to write the data. The second is a little bit more efficient. It uh, uses the native TSM writer. Right? Um, flips is more efficient. You'll get faster migration. What's the flip side? If you use the TSM writer, you'll have to bounce the database instance for those files to take effect in InfluxDB. If you simply use the HTTP API, you'll see that you know, without restarting the instance, you will see that data migrated, but it takes longer, right? And we can see the difference even with a minimal set of data, like what that is, right? So <clears throat> the first configuration here is I'm going to actually use uh, the TSM writer, right? Uh, is this visible to everybody at the back? Okay. Maybe bump it up and uh, Better? Uh, yeah. Okay. 
So in this option, I just simply run go run migration.go, and as an option, I essentially specify the TSM WS is the TSM writer, and then I have to point at the source directory where my graphite files reside, right? So in this case, my whisper path is opt graphite storage blah 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 agents, and it's my MacBook Pro local. Don't ask me how much time it took to set up graphite on my Mac. It was painful, right? But anyway, you know that's where I'm writing my data. And in this case, because you're using the native writer, you essentially have to specify where your influx data directory resides. So if you are on a shared network, you can actually give the network path. In this case, I'm on the local system, so um, that's where this goes, user shubrakar.influxdb slash data. And there are a couple of fields here, which is one is the dash from. And it also has a dash until. So I'll show you all the flags that's actually documented. Uh, I, if I don't pass the dash until, it kind of defaults to now, right? So it's kind of looking at the live feed. But dash from tells you like, hey, I was only interested in migrating graphite data, which was maybe a week old and till now, right? So I don't care any data that I um, was looking at before that, right? So that's the from date. And the dash DB name is the name of the database that you want to create in InfluxDB. That's kind of obvious. And then we have to pass the migration file that we just uh, are going to construct on the fly right now. So this is the sample one. I'm just going to say, let's create a dummy.json. Okay. Does not exist. So it will say, okay, no such file or directory. So let's go ahead and create one. And I'm going to keep it empty. Okay. And let's run that one more time. And you can see the date is 24th, that's today. So the clock starts at 0000 today morning, right? So when I do that, now it's going ahead and it started reading those whisper files, right? And it does not try to force this intelligence on you, trying to give you the ability to define those patterns. So I said, okay, we did not detect any pattern, right? Um, the data that's getting read from graphite is in a format which looks like uh, the bottom here, carbon.agents, uh, prepended by that, text1, dot text2, dot text3, right? In my case, I know that for my CPU usage file that I just inspected, there was only text1 and text2, text1 being my host name and text2 being the value, right? So in this case, um, I'm not going to select text three, otherwise I might actually mess up my pattern. So let's say I'm just going to create these two, okay? And the measurement name, right? Uh, what should be the measurement name? So in my case, uh, the measurement name that you want to have in InfluxDB. So in this case, text three, like uh, in my case, it's text two uh, that I want to create as the measurement name. And text one essentially would be the value, right? So let's go ahead and do that. And <clears throat> along with the value, you could associate tags, right? So with every value, you can actually have a measurement and the measurement can have a tag. So in my case, I could say uh, text one is possibly host, right? That's how I want to tag it. Okay. And the value is just value. Okay. So do you want to add this pattern? So it actually gave me a representation what pattern is going to be added. And I'll say, if I'm not happy with it, I can do no go through the process again. But let's go ahead and see and add it. So now it actually tells me what the TSM format is going to be when you are applying that pattern on the Whisper data, right? So in this case, I'll say, okay, the key is going to be, uh, for example, if I am looking at queues, uh, host is going to be, Shubra MacBook Pro, blah, 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 and the queues and the value is going to be the actual value. So I actually got it right, right? This was very simple. But there you would be having cases in Whisper where your um, number of fields that you are concatenating might be 30, 40, 50, right? <laughs> then you have to be really creative about like what is important to you, which ones you care to migrate, which ones you care to just dump, right? Okay, so in this case, do you want to still do the migration? Yes, looks good, let's go ahead. So went through pretty fast, and it said number of whisper files I migrated was 16, right? It took me 37 milliseconds to migrate that. The original file size in whisper was about 23.73 meg, and the TSM file is only 4.32 KB, 
right? So I almost got a compression of 99.98%, right? Um, I did this using 16 files on my local system, but the guys who are testing it right now um, have gone all the way at least up to 10,000 files, and that <laughs> compression ratio is still valid, and we are not way off, right? So anyway, so what happened under the hood, right? First of all, uh, for this to take effect, because we are using the native writer, I'm going to restart the service. So this is the InfluxDB service. Let's make it a bit bigger. Okay, and I'm going to restart the daemon. Okay, all good. Let's now go ahead and check. Uh, so this is the client. And let's say, let's make it bigger. <coughs> Show databases. There you go. Do you see this migrated TSM database in there? Oh, OK. Better? OK. So let's try to use it, right? Okay. And let's see some measurements in there. OK, so it looks like it did its job. Let's try to query and see if there's actual data inside it, right? So I'm going to say select star from AVG update time. Don't do that on a real-time system. You'll get screwed. Uh, <laughs> and that's not an optimal way to query, right? select star. But anyway, uh, I have a minimal data set, so I'm going to just do that. And I can see that I did retrieve the data. Let's see if I got the mapping right. So the measurement name was average update time, right? This is the timestamp associated with that. This is the host, and this is the actual value. So yeah, it, it did work, right? OK, so now uh, what I'm going to do is show you what happened in the internals of the database, right? So we know that my influx DB data directory was um, this, right? And if I check the new data structure here, I can see there's a migrated TSM. So let's go there and do a, and you can see that this is the compressed TSM file, uh, which convert, this is with the converted graphite data. It's super simple. All right, so let's try out the second mode. And uh, in this, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use, I don't like to type, as you can see. So I'm going to use the V2 client API, right? just the HTTP API. So the option, uh, everything remains the same. The option switches to V2. right? Whisper path is still the same. Uh, the from date is still the same. DB migrated, maybe I'll rename this as client V2 so that I can see both the schemas. Now, there's a host field here. And in this case, I'm not going to write this to my local host on this system. Uh, we have a managed service, so I essentially spun up an instance on the managed cloud. And this is the instance name and the port. This is the API port that's exposed on that managed server instance. And that's my username, and don't bother about the password. I'm going to change it. So, <laughs> And in this case, I'm going to use the pre-built migration config.json. Right? So let's try that. OK, so looks like the mapping is pretty good. Let's go ahead and run this. And here you can actually see the wheels turning, right, as compared to the TSM writer, which was. Now, uh, interesting thing to note, the files are still the same, but the time taken, right, this field at the bottom, uh, what was the earlier value? Do you guys remember? About 37 milliseconds. Look at this. This is around 4 seconds, right? So it's slower. Right. Uh, however, that being said, um, it might actually be preferable to use this uh, because um, if the TSM writer's API changes, you don't have to be worried about the you know tool getting updated to you know accommodate that API, or in case you know you don't have data access to the right directory, or there are other things out there. Maybe you know your sharding, right? Maybe your sharding um, architecture changes, right? Uh, in that case, as long as you write the API route, you should be immune to those changes. So it gives you a level of abstraction out there, right? Okay. So now with this, I'm going to go ahead and spin up. Actually, not spin up. I already have this. So I'm logged in into my cloud interface, 
and here I can say show databases and I can see here there was a migrated one with v2 and in this case I can probably just switch and say show measurements and there are almost my updated tables and if I say select star from g update time I got it right right okay so now you got it now we are sure it's queryable and now take it a little further let's go ahead and add a dashboard to visualize the data so if you're not tried chronograph give it a spin it's a very rapidly evolving product so I'm just gonna say graphite statistics that I created go there <clears throat> first of all let's select the database so in this case, I could be picking, let's say the TSM writer, and I'm gonna make that the default, apply. And in the measurement, let's say average update time, uh, or maybe let's say the CP usage, right? Okay, and there you go. And uh, let's say for the past hour. Okay, so that's real time data, right? So that's kind of it, <laughs> right? So give it a spin. Uh, we have to test it for boundary use cases. Run it under load, try to break it, submit your issues, and it will get hardened, make your life much more easier. Make sense? Cool. Um, that's about it. Thank you.